So as someone who grew up in a single parent home, uh, my father uh, was was present, um, but I did not grow up with him in the household. So oftentimes uh, as I've transitioned into this uh, sweet period of having uh, two little boys, uh, a lot of people often uh, wonder, uh, how am I connecting uh, being a father uh, and really understanding the fatherhood of God. This season has been really interesting in a lot of ways. I think more than anything, it has um, made me love God more. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because uh, before I was a dad, I had all these grand ambitions and all these like pictures of like all these awesome things I was going to do with my kids and like how much I was going to like be present and how I was going to be the best dad in the world because I knew that, you know, I didn't have a dad and I knew how much that significantly affected me. Uh, and then I became a dad uh, and I realized that talk is cheap. I, I began to realize that it is a daily sacrifice uh, to be a good dad, to give my son uh, my attention, uh, to give him my affection, uh, to focus squarely in on him and say, son, I'm listening to you. And even when he's saying words that I can't understand, and even when he's, you know, just talking to me and just wanting to do stuff that is absolutely to me meaningless, like for me to act, it, it is a struggle to stay focused in on him and not to want to just veg out on the couch after a long day of work, uh, but to actually give him my time, my attention and my affection uh, that he, um, uh, so so heavily craves. As I've transitioned into this period, I began to stand in awe of our Heavenly Father uh, because I began to look at myself and then look at my son and I see my son, I see myself in my son. Uh, and, and I recognize that the duty that I have as a father is extremely weighty. And when I look at you know, how he's disobedient, uh, when I ask him to do one thing and he wants to do another, uh, how he's stubborn, uh, I begin to say, whoa, that's me. That's me right there. Like there's, there's oftentimes I find myself uh, impatiently telling my son to be patient, right? And I begin to look at myself as a child of God and I say, God, you are so amazing. You are so kind. You are so patient. You know, even when I'm saying stuff that doesn't make any sense, you're listening. Even when uh, I, I am being disobedient, you're patient. Even when uh, I want to spend time uh, um, uh, talking about things that are minor in the grand scheme of things, you lend me your ear and you say, son, I'm here and I'm listening and I want you to do those things. He doesn't just make time for us like he has time in the palm of his hands. And he says, I'm yours. You have my ear. And, and it inspires me, it convicts me, uh, it, it, it leaves me with so much gratitude to know that I have, have a Heavenly Father that I can look to and that I can be reminded when I'm uh, pridefully looking down at my son and saying, you're just a stupid little kid. I, I love my son. He gets more kisses, more hugs than, than I want to say any kid in the world, but that's probably not true. But I, I am so affectionate with him. But at times I'm just like, oh, you're such a... You're such a kid. You're such a, you're such a toddler. And at the same time, I'm convicted when I think about my Heavenly Father because He never looks upon me and says, Philip, you're just such a human. You're, you're such a finite being. No, He says, you're my son, and I love you, and you're, you've been adopted into my family, and you have my ear, and you have my attention, and I'm going to give it to you freely, not because of how good you are, but because of the righteousness of another. As I think about like fatherhood as a mere mortal, as a mere man, um, and fatherhood as it relates to God, him communicating that, hey, I'm Abba Father, um, I am left with gratitude, uh, I am left with uh, deep conviction, uh, and I'm inspired to uh, love my son uh, in, a, in the most humble way possible.